we just got here it is currently 4 p.m here in colorado so my brother and i coached junior high football and we had to wait till after our our football game last night to leave from missouri so we drove 15 and a half hours yeah we drove 15 and a half hours non-stop and so we only have a few days because my brother and i are teachers if tonight which friday night all day saturday all day sunday monday morning so very very short trip and we're just going to be super aggressive if we can once we once we spot elk we're going to get after them as hard as we can um, but i'm going to take a couple shots with the bow just to make sure it's still good from the trip and then we're going to try to go find some elk So it's the afternoon, it's almost five. So we only have a couple and a half hours or so. Uh, but we pretty much walked over the entire ridge that we were planning on hunting this morning and there was no sign that looked like elk had been in there within the last week. So we decided not to stay there because uh, we only have a couple days and we're going to this other drainage uh, that's over, these, over this hill a little ways just to see if there's anything over there. Sherman said he's had a couple bulls over there that have responded to calls in the past and so we're gonna go see if something will respond to some calls. ladder and see if she looks up. Yeah. Do it. Oh yeah, look. 
fucked up it looked like. Sure did. Did you hear that? Yeah. That was a bugle. I wish I could be consistent with this like I am. It's walking this way. It is? Dude, what if that thing came up with plenty of shooting light done? Dude, we're getting to hear a live elk. We are getting to hear a live elk. That's <laughs> pretty sweet. His bugle doesn't sound good either. No, it's real short. tree that it's right next to. Oh uh, yeah. But it's coming this way. We're gonna kill him tomorrow. No doubt. Dude that thing is coming this way. Yeah. Let me explain what happened here. <coughs> well uh, while we were calling that bull over there on private we heard another one back over here that could be maybe on public but way way out there so I started calling over there to him. And the one on private went quiet for a while and then out of nowhere sounded way closer. So we just, we don't have a lot of time left. But we just backed probably, I don't know, 80 yards away from the fence line over the hill. So if he comes up here, he's got to try to commit to come over the fence. But he's way closer. Let's see if he'll respond to this. just have to get out of here yeah I think so but I think we come just right here like on top of this mound to start yeah tomorrow. I'm cool with that it's gonna look like a lot but I'm gonna mix this all into itself Um, so first elk hunting trip, it's been a, a lot of fun. We've been traveling up and down mountains, wasn't really knowing uh, what to expect, and this evening was really exciting. Just having Cole and the, just those bulls just bugling back and forth was really neat. Um, but as we were walking out in the dark, we heard multiple bulls um, bugling around, so that was still... Uh, really neat. So excited for tomorrow and uh, what all that has to bring. Nice. Yeah. Well, so had a pretty slow morning. Went back to the same spot that we were at last night when we were going back and forth with a bull, but we ran into other hunters and nothing was moving or bugling except for mule deer. So we decided to leave. We were going to go try this new piece that we found on a map that had a pretty good looking north facing slope that, with a bunch of trees and just go try to walk through it. But on our way there we ran into a game warden and he gave us a some advice of where to go where people might not be and he said it can hold some elk. So issue is apparently there's a reason that people don't go over there and is because it's hard to get to. So. This could be a, uh, a uh, test, mentally, 
and physically. working this really steep ledge for the last, I don't know, hour, hour and a half, doing some calling, glassing. We got to a spot where we're kind of coming to the end of this ridge and we don't have a whole lot of other ground to cover for the day. And uh, sure enough, we heard one bugling. It's actually way back down in there. Um, not sure exactly where at, we can barely hear it, but we're gonna start moving that direction, see how close to it we can get. It's walking now? Yeah, it started walking up that way. Hey, do, we, do I need to freaking, do we need to hightail it? Do I freaking hightail it up here, out of sight, and like run around over there, and try to come back down, and then just kind of still hunt through? And basically try to use that giant cedar as cover, like keep coming down where that giant cedar is in between me and it, and then just try to work down. I think that's not a bad idea. I think it's like really still hunting into it. Maybe. There's maybe. not a very big area, so if we, if you can get in there with the elk. And the wind I would be in our favor. I guess we bumped them. Um, we were trying to come, we were trying to use tree cover to come up the ridge, kind of circle around the top because they were down in the cut and it looked kind of thick. Um, unfortunately, I guess as we decided to cut up the, the hill, one of them stepped out. We, Austin stayed back there and uh, was watching it and apparently one of them stepped out on our side and was just staring up at us as we were climbing the, that was an elk. Yep, just bugle. bugle. That one is still over there. Yep. He just went again. Yep. You guys are only about 15 yards from me when the, when we got 15 yards up the hill before that thing stepped out. Yeah, and she <laughs> stepped out and she was just staring. I was trying to get your guys' attention without being loud. She stepped into that gap where we first saw him. No, she stepped out of the trees on, this on our side. Yeah, and she was just watching you guys as you were going up, and then they didn't they didn't run hard. It was just a slow trot. The good thing is we weren't coming across. that way. We were going that way, so maybe they're not. Yeah. Well, he's he's absolutely ripping over there. Is he? Yeah, yeah I think what we're going to do is try to, since they already bumped over that hill, I think we're just going to try to circle around over there okay. and just hang out for a little bit, let it cool let it cool down and then try to see if we can pinpoint kind of where he's at. Oh, 
there's a bunch of elk up there. Really? Where are you looking? Um, basically right at these trees, the very top of this first crest. They're okay. just, you can see they're, you can see them moving to the left right there. Oh, I see a bull. Where's he at? He's the third one on the left. Oh yeah, that's a big bull. Uh, it's to the right. So the two that you were looking at. Let me just look at my binoculars. Do yeah. you see any elk right now? Yes. They're over by these two trees over here, the fat one and the skinny one. The really wide one? Yeah. Oh, I see them all down. <laughs> He's to the left? Yeah. I see him. Bull visible? Now he is. I feel like there's nine cows with that. I counted at least eight. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. Got his head up. Are you just filming the left bit? Yeah. You can honestly. Is he walking around and stuff? Yeah, he's walking to the right. So we came to this spot that the uh, game warden kind of told us about. Talk to him quiet. Okay, no, I don't know. <laughs> I just didn't know if your mic would pick it up yeah, very well. Yeah, it's quiet. All right, well. Anyways, we had a chance at a couple cows. They came running over this ridge that we're sitting on. There's a bull bugling just right over here next to Private. We thought we might be able to try to get make a move on him. And then he kind of shut up for a while. And then these two other elk over here on this other ridge started firing up. So we've been calling back and forth with them. And we were finally able to see him up there with a couple bulls. So probably like 12 or maybe more, I don't know. Cows up there herding them around, calling like crazy. Um, so I think tomorrow morning we're going to come try to sit up on this hill and if not a bull, hopefully a cow will come by and maybe we can seal the deal on the last morning. Man, that's cool to watch though. This is my new favorite spot. Mine too. Oh really? No, it's all good. Seven cows.
Well, no luck on the last morning. Heard some heard some elk bugling. It's the first morning we've actually heard them bugling, so that was exciting. Got to actually see them running around on some different ridges. Um, just some, I guess, parting thoughts. Pack a pack a bunch of food. Don't forget a spatula um, or syrup. Make sure and bring <laughs> those things if you're gonna make pancakes. But uh, as far as the hunting actually goes, I, it's not a bad idea to run into a game warden occasionally and ask them where elk are at. How would you say the the hunt went compared to your expectations? Well, it was different terrain than I was expecting. Yeah. I'd never been to this side of uh, Colorado, so I, I, get, I was expecting more of like... I was expecting more like Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain yeah. type trees all over the place. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting just super wide open space just looking out at everything it's deceiving how steep it oh, is, man. how steep it all is and on the tops they you know they aren't bad but when you get up right up at the base it's but it was cool to see some bulls pushing some cows around though yeah that, that was, was cool. definitely something i'll remember for a long time and probably one of my more exciting hunting experiences yeah, just being fun. able to see them hear them and um just them chasing each other around that was cool got up super early we got like an hour over an hour hike back up into uh this <laughs> sorry Can I, be out? <laughs> I was fine until austin started laughing <laughs>